banished from Earth Classic Game Room broadcasts from the Intergalactic Space Arcade on its never-ending mission to review everything. Welcome to Classic Game Room. Are you ready for a horror movie inspired, blood soaked, side scrolling brawler beat em up on your Genesis? If so, then you're ready for Splatterhouse 3. Good music and a cool intro. It's Splatterhouse 3 from 1993 on your Sega Genesis. This game has some interesting visual effects on the 16-bit Sega Genesis. From Namco, it's a side-scrolling brawler beat em up like Double Dragon meets Friday the 13th. You're playing this dude with a face mask who reminds me of Jason Voorhees, crossed with one of the guys from Altered Beast. Pounding the crap out of monsters in an attempt to save a Jennifer or, or something. I'm not really sure what's going on. It's been a long time since I've played a Splatterhouse game. For the most part, you're doing the same thing over and over again, punching, jumping, kicking. It's like Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, Double Dragon, any of those games except bloodier, and that's what I remember about the series from back in the day. Splatterhouse games are packed with blood and gore, something you didn't see much of back in the 80s or early 90s until games like this one, Mortal Kombat, and Narc came along. It's pretty tame by today's standards, but you gotta love these cutscenes. The cinema-inspired cutscenes are legitimately creepy and quite interesting. As you battle your way through this blood-soaked mansion and dungeons, you're attempting to make it to the end boss and defeat them before the time runs out and save certain characters in the game, I, I think. I never actually saved anyone. They all just died. Everyone died. I'm not very good at these games to begin with, and I'm not sure how anybody could actually defeat the bosses in, in time. Splatterhouse 3 is really challenging. Jennifer is destroyed by the foul beast. Well, that's a shame, but at least there's no typos or punctuation errors in that slide. Splatterhouse 3 gets an A plus for blood and intestines on the ground, but a D minus for proofreading. After you've defeated all of the monsters in a room, the doors open and you can pull up your map and try to plot your way to the end boss or else you'll die just like your preckless wife. So everyone listening, make sure you let that special someone know how preckless they are to you. They'll thank you, probably with a look of confusion. Maybe, maybe they'll just walk away. While I've enjoyed playing this game immensely, it brings back some memories. It's definitely style over substance. Splatterhouse 3 is way cooler than it is actually good. It looks great, I love the monster designs, but there's only like five of them. It's terribly repetitive, and the lack of a two-player mode makes it kind of frustrating after a while. There's no one there to get your back, so it's always being attacked by monsters trying to eat you. But it's still super cool and immensely likable, which is why so many people fondly remember and talk about the Splatterhouse series. And you've gotta love these cutscenes. I also really enjoy the massive amount of reverb on his screaming when he gets knocked down, and this room filled with severed hands trying to attack you. You just didn't get stuff like this very often on the Genesis. Fortunately, there's a password system, since it's a challenging game. That may come in handy, and of course, if you're interested in making it through, 
With a little help, all of the codes are available online these days. So, how about a classic game room shout out and thank you all the way to Chris from Woodland, California. Thank you for sending Splatterhouse 3 to the show. Since I already gave this game some letter ratings, I may have to give it a B-plus for sound effects. Uh, uh. You know, the enemy designs are definitely interesting. Splatterhouse 3, it's like a B-movie video game, and I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for, so I would say they succeeded. Uh. 